welcome. So that's the last day today of these uh, three day sessions. And we will go through, uh, through some useful utilities like how to make the archives and how to transfer the files over the internet and how to make the, um, there will be also different types of transferring. There will be one exercise with respect to that one. And then we will come back to the utilities that I still want to show you how to use and we will practice with them. And then on top of that, I will show you a couple of techniques how to make them to work together. So in particular, we will, if we know already something about piping, but then today we will learn also about uh, redirections and then uh, about some uh, grouping about some booleans, how to use this uh, very, very simple uh, <clears throat> conditionals on the command line. And on the at the end of the session, we will go also for the initialization files. So how to set up your environment and then how to make it more or less permanent so that every time when you log in, you will get exactly the same environment for yourself within the bash. Okay, but let's go to the file archiving. So there was a couple of requests, which I read already yesterday, but wait, so that make it slower. Uh, I'll do my best, I promise you, but so I'm on schedule and still trying. So so my idea here is that I give you as much as I can based on my experience and you get as much as you can based on your experience, but just try to get the information. So all the information which is given over here is useful and based on the tens of years of different experience with working with the Linux, etc. So let's go to the um, uh, file archiving and transferring. So <clears throat> there is one utility, tar. So I already named a little bit uh, like Unix ones, uh, like find, then you already touch a little bit grip, then tar. E-A-R is uh, yet another one. That's the one which comes from the very long ago times, from the, the old times, in a sense that it's uh, when archiving was yet on the tapes and actually name exactly saying this, so it's tape archiving. But it's still the standard de facto. So when, you, when it comes back to something, when you need to archive, then most probably on Linux, people means that this archive will be dot tar dot gz so target it or in other words and that means um, that you better know how to use that because most of the software which is distributed around it's in this kind of archive and that means that you should be able to open it on your own and that also means that you should be able to work with that list the archive uh, see what's uh, inside and understand how to make your own archive for the sake of distribution. So TRR, once again, you can go for the manual page and see what's there. <clears throat> and you will see pretty long list of what kind of things can be done. The long list is simply because the itself uh, utility is very old. And, but basic practice, uh, practical things are quite simple. So what you know, need to know about it, our archive is how to make it and now, and then how to extract the files from the data archive. Let's start doing it right away. So for instance, I will, I'm still in my demo space. I clean up it yesterday a little bit from the rest of the, that we don't really need, but there is some stuff left and let's try to make the archive of that stuff. So what I'm saying here that please do the compression. That's sense C. So one thing with the ter, uh, tar archiving utility is that you can use the notation, which is very common on Linux when you put the options with the minus something, or in the same way like PS, this process uh, managing utility, uh, you can also leave this minus off. That comes from the older Unix time. But that still works. So both will okay. I will just for the sake of consistency will use it uh, minus as well. <clears throat> so here uh, tar minus c means compression, and then I put file. In a sense that compression doesn't really comes with a compression. So uh, it's uh, in tar point of view it means packaging. 
So when you get some directories, files, subdirectories inside them, and you kind of make out of them a one single package, that package would be simple called, uh, you need to come up with some archive name. Let me be uh, simplistic over here. So I just use the archive. <clears throat> and then, oh, let me say that it's a demo space archive. And then I know that my demo space is actually the directory which comes, which I am in. So, but I can say it this way, demo space. Uh, let me do one thing before I continue. So I go just up, just do not get it confused completely. So in my demo space will be, and then in this way, rcf and then demo space dot EAR and then the demo space. So what I'm putting over here, I'm putting here first what I want to do. So I want to make it compressed. And then I put here the file and the file which comes out should be this one. So that's the, I uh, have a misprint over here. That's gonna be my tar archive after the archivation is done. And the next come, what exactly comes to that archive? So let's try it. So now I am in my I am in my home directory and I can see that that has been created. There is a size of that. Then there are some permissions and demo space is there. But I can use also just for sake of comparison, there is this command called disk usage. Disk usage tells you exactly what's the size of the uh, what's the size of the directory, for instance. So now I can see that uh, my directory is about 40 kilobytes. And then the archive is also about, well, it's 30 kilobytes, a little bit less. So there's some kind of uh, compactness has presented over there. But anyway, so that also means that uh, actually it hasn't been compressed properly. What has happened over here? The thing is that, as I told you, already tar can compress the final archive or cannot in order to include the compression so you can put the a over here and then put at the end of the archive uh, file name some type of compression in linux the most common is the gz so in the same way like in windows and in mac that would be zip so this is a kind of uh, gzip, uh, which is a common compression uh, compression algorithm for the uh, for the Linux. So and most part of the packages will be distributed in this kind of format .tar .z. But as I told you, they can be both, and there are some cases when you can use both of them. So let me see what I have over here. Demo space. Uh, um, where am I? Uh, no, I meant R. So now I see here that I have got already two files. One is just a compact version of the demo space without compression. And another one is already compact version, one file, but already uh, implemented with the uh, gzip compression on top of that. And you see the difference in files. And actually for the sake of distribution, the common to go would be this one, CAF. So <clears throat> one notation over here, some older guys, uh, guides, not guys, guys, uh, guides would say you that you should use something like Zeta or something like, like E or capital E or it was a B or something. So that only uh, reflects the all the different uh, compression algorithms. But in principle, in the modern time, in the uh, nowadays, the tar is smart enough. If you put A over here, that means that uh, that tells to the utility itself that please uh, please make the compression based on the uh, on the extension of the file that you are trying to get. And in case we're getting GZ, so that means that it will be zipped. And in case we put here, for instance, bzip, I'm not sure if it's installed or not, but then we can get another one. 
so you can see that I'm getting this deep one. So, but actually, it's not correct. So there should be some. Was it B zip? Sorry, I didn't test it, so I don't remember exactly uh, what was the. But again, we can use the manual, and then if you go for the compression, you will see the list of the options. Uh, ah, so that's the B zip two must be, and then. If you want to use LZIP, that should be LZIP. If you want to use LZ, uh, LZ op, that should be this one. So basically, what I'm saying here is that nowadays most of the people are just using the outer compression, and so you don't need to remember all these uh, uh, filters to use it. And the one is one of the most used is uh, Z and then minus Z. But anyway, here you go. Let's try still. Basic two will it be correct this time. It's still not compressed. Uh, probably, probably. I don't have it installed on this auto uh, laptop which I'm using to give the course. So I have it installed on my other, uh, on my other desktop. But anyway, so you've got the idea that you can use whatever you want to. So basically, instead of A, you can put here. Z or G or capital G or what else was there? Something like something else was there as well. But that is the most common since we are talking about the GZIP. So you can just <clears throat> run A and demo space. Okay, that was the first touch. And then the next one, say that I have it in my. Uh, in my directory right here. So I have it over here and there are a couple of them. And then if I wanna take a look at them, so let me also remove those nasty ones that I happened to create, but unsuccessfully. Okay, we are back to these two. So how to take a look what's inside? You don't need to untar it. You just want to take a look at the content. So one thing to try is star minus T. T means listing. So you do not really untar it. You do not really uncompress it. You do not save it anywhere, but you just see what's there inside. Okay. Then if you want to uncompress it, you can do it this way, X. Uh, I don't need yet another demo space uh, directory in here, but for the sake of uh, for the sake of uh, just testing, let me do it like this. Okay, it already exists. Surprise! It already exists too. Okay, and I go to the CD test file, and then I move my demo space. Z over here so you can see it once again it's in my directory and then I can play with this without interfering with my original demo space so usually this is happening this is this happens uh, in such a way that you transfer it to some other directory so that you play with some other directory and, and so you don't have this issue but since I am within this, the same file system it makes sense to just and then I do tar, and then next my it's my ex extraction uh, option. It's minus x, and then af, and then demo space. Now let's see what will happen. So we will get exactly the demo space over here, and the benefit of this um, tar archiving is that you are getting all the attributes of all the files of all the directories in exactly the same way like they used to be in the original. So timestamps, ownership, uh, uh, permissions, everything is um, <clears throat> everything is stored for you over here. And this is one of the biggest because this, if you, for instance, would be, would like to do it with a copy command, copy would not do it for you. Not in this way, not that accurate. It can 
uh, of course, uh, save for you some of the information, but it will not be that accurate as Star would do. And other, I will see, I will show you another one comment later on how we can make a whole uh, copy of the whole tree of from, from one part of the file system to another part of the uh, file system. So we can use also TAR for that. So here is basically to take away uh, three commands. So how to compress it with the TAF, then how to list it with the TAF, and then how to extract it with the XAF. For everything else, if you ever need, you just go to the manual page and see what's happening in there. One important remark over here. Uh, one important remark, when you do the TAR archive, a TAR archive doesn't really uh, remove anything from your original directory. It just creates another one. And the difference makes sense to remember especially if you are doing something with a really huge directory structure. And in this situation, you will get the kind of, you will need extra space to create the star archive before you will be able to transfer this. And that's especially the kind of bottleneck if somebody of the system administrator tells you, okay, get out some of the data and you start thinking, okay, because you are really short on, the, on, your, <clears throat> on your quota, on your space and then you will start creating those kind of uh, tar archives and you end up in the situation that tar kafka archive has not been created it's in the middle but you don't have a space anymore just to remember that tar does not really uh, touch your original so nothing is removed nothing is uh, uh, compressed in a sense and the original is still there we will have just in a second, uh, not in a second, in five minutes, when we go to the next session, I will show you how to do it also on the fly. But before that, I can tell you, I can tell you about another utility, which is just the zip. Uh, that's the kind of zip algorithm for compression, but it's GNU zip, so it's essentially the name is um, uh, gzip. It's also the standard de facto all around Linux and Unix. So it's pretty much if you're locked in to any Unix kind like installation, so it will be there and along with the tar. The difference between this one and tar is tar for the really directories and subdirectories and common uh, structures, uh, tree structures of the directories. But then zip is usually used for the single file. Okay, let's see that if I want to, for instance, exit my hello one, uh, what will happen? What will happen next? That you see that before I had hello.sh and now I have hello.sh exit and my original one has been deleted. So this is the thing to remember that when you exit something, the original one will be by default deleted. And so, uh, then the another one thing to remember if you want to uncompress it you go for the gun zip and once again my hello sh is back so useful when you do it with one file and you want to go for the quick compression and just for instance somebody is asking could you please send me your uh, stuff by email so that's easy to make an email and put it uh, either as attachment or you just put it somewhere on the web. But again, tar zip is the most common. So because of especially about when you're talking about this software distribution. Uh, I think this is pretty much um, uh, about tar. So yeah, I forgot to tell you. So there is one option which is uh, which allows you to go to the you don't need to make dir and path oh you still need to make dir but you don't need to cd to some directory you can say it explicitly on the command line and so tar will just unzip everything what you want to that specific directory which is uh which goes after follows after the minus capital c i think i have told you 
what I wanted to tell, what I had to tell, and now transferring files. So we're still working with the files. Uh, if you notice that uh, the processes, they took me uh, way less time than, than the files. So because of most of the time that you're doing, is that you're doing something with the files and with the results. Transferring the files, that's yet another one issue that you will definitely miss. And so, um, and now I'm a little bit specific. I'm a little bit specific because where I'm talking about how to transfer between two Linux systems. And that's the, mm, what do I say? So, because if you are a Windows client, I mean, if you are on the Windows machine, uh, you can probably use something like WinSCP and you get access to the remote file system and you will see it as a kind of graphical, through the graphical user interface and you will be able to just uh, drag and drop from one window to another one, uh, all the directories and files that you want to. Uh, on the Linux terminal, you don't have a graphical user interface essentially, but you have some other utilities. And the most common for transferring utilities, transferring files in between two hosts, that's called the SCP. So when it comes down to one single file, like for instance, Stark zip or something else, uh, then it comes down to the SCP. Let me demonstrate it. I will use my, uh, let's see that, let's say that I will use the most common for the alpha users, Kosh. And I wanna, what I want to copy. Uh, uh -huh. What I wanna copy over here. Actually, let me see where the, did I have this, uh, let me make once again the CAF, the demo space, demo space, R, Z, and then I'm saying here that please make this directory inside this directory as well. So that's a little bit tricky. Tar will probably say me that something has happened, but this is, you just, just don't pay attention. This is harmless ls minus la so now i've got my demo space is over here i can also check it once again tar minus taf okay everything is there even if tar was kind of producing some kind of warnings but now i want to copy it and now i can use instead of copy copy command would be uh, for the local copying only but scp that would be for the SSH protocol. So the same protocol that some of you have used to connect to a remote server, there is part of this uh, protocol implementation, this copying program, SCP. So I'm saying SCP, I'm saying the name, and then I'm saying where I want to copy it. Alpha.fi. And then what's important, I put here the column. Otherwise, SCP will make a local copy if it doesn't know uh, that that's the name. And then on top of that, you usually don't need it, but I'm just telling you to do this because if you're on your local laptop and your local login name is different, then you have to explicitly say that, okay, my login name on that machine is that. And so let's try to copy it. And default directory where the demo space will go to will be my home directory on Kosh. So if I put nothing over here, I can put some directory name if I know where to go. But in any case, I don't care. So it will go to my home directory. So let me see SCP. And in my case, it should come up quickly because I'm using the SSH keys. So, and the, I don't really, it doesn't really ask me the passwords. Otherwise it would ask you the password as well. But okay, the demo space has been copied um, and it's there. How to check it? You can go to the Kosh. I am SSH in there. And let me see, is it there? Well, I know it's there, I'm just demonstrating that, okay, it has been copied. I go back to my normal, uh, to my normal screen. That's the SCP, as easy as that. So if you want to make a copy of some very 
just just one single file you can do it this way you can also do it with the uh with the directories so but then you put the uh, say that we have some directory or what did we have inside was it did or what did we have no So we had some folder scp folder and that would work as well for me i mean if i would try to make a copy of folder with the scp it will give me the it's not a for it's not a regular file so you have to explicitly say here that please make it recursively and in this case it will do the proper work for me as well so all this file file one one have been copied to the course but I can also show you a better choice. So along with the SCP, we also have SFTP. It's a kind of combination of FTP and secure uh, SSH protocol. So when I have uh, something like SFTP Kosh, what will happen? SFTP will show for me a connection, it will open for me, establish for me a connection to a Kosh, and I will be there in the way uh kind of uh open window that's uh, asking to me what exactly i want to copy or what exactly i want to do so to get some help you can try common help and you can get pretty much a long list of what's going on over here and then for instance i want to check where am i um of course it's a remote working directory so that's important it's not my home local on course okay and then i want to check what's there okay there is some kind of documents and then for instance i decided that i want to get something let me get that uh, particular file for instance this one is small enough and i should be able to get it quickly so that's that's easy so and then along with the ls for instance l and a so you must know here that LS, for instance, is just part of the implementation of this uh, SFTP protocol, uh, of, of this SFTP utility. It's not the normal LS that you would use inside the bash. So for instance, LS uh, would not work. It's similarly invalid, but again, some flags will still work over here and you can get the additional help of what exactly is doing LS uh, or no. Ah, okay, so here is this, uh, all the uh, information which comes out right away. Uh, let me see. Let's help. No. How to get the help. Okay, but definitely you can go to the manual page, but well, at least I know this, that's the way to do that. And the tricky thing with the SFTP is that you should be able to see both and your local directory and your remote directory. And LS uh, will give you the remote directory but then l l s l a will give you the local one essentially and so you should be able to check okay actually i've got this one and this is already on my local directory and in the same way if you want to put something then you just use put and then that means that you want to copy something from here to there where you are right there and that's the way to kind of do the transfer between the two hosts now you see that i am just logged into kosh and i did the transfer the way i wanted and i also checked it right away i don't need to make the different scp a different ssh i can use for one sftp so i definitely suggest that you pay attention to this even if this uh, i'm pretty sure most of the people will still say you scp something but then if you see that Okay, you have lots of stuff to copy and you still need to check it out. So SFTP, SFTP is your friend. And along with the SFTP, of course, you can use it just normally. Actually, I have these commands over here as well. So you can, instead of SFTP, you can use it just like this with one single uh, command and you don't go into this interface. You don't need to really do anything else, especially if you're thinking of some automation and this kind of things will be used without your interaction with you. 
so I'm exiting exiting and I do hope that at the moment you're already on top of the how to make the archive how to transfer the file and then next one I will mention to you one utility which is over here but still very useful I mean it's at the end of the section but still extremely useful it's called the rsync rsync is the it became popular probably about 10 years ago or something. And now it's uh, became just one of the standard tools which are available on pretty everything, every, pretty everywhere uh, on uh, on every distribution uh, of uh, Linux system. And so the rsync is used to make a sync of two directories. You can do something like with the SCP, et cetera, but functionality of rsync is way more advanced so it can check and can go and make the only updates and for instance on all my backup scripts they have written with the rsync and i'm using this all the time so pay attention to that one and then if you are uh, kind of keen on doing kind, kind of automatic automatic and backups to some remote server so, or if you just want to keep in, in, in sync some two directories, one on your laptop, another one on Triton or some other resource that you are using, then rsync is definitely your friend number one, or actually number two after SSFTP. So just Google for that and you will find lots of examples how to use rsync and then you will find something useful for you. Uh, so my role here is just to mention it that this one is available. And you remember at the very beginning when we have started these sessions on the very first one, I have shown you one command in order to impress you. Uh, so my goal was at that point not to confuse you, but impress. And then now you should be able to read it and understand what it does. Oh, actually not yet, but because we are using here the red direction. Ah, okay. So let's come back to this after the next session. You should be able to read it completely, but otherwise you should now understand what it does. More specifically, it does the archiving of uh, everything what uh, comes. Uh, my directory is over here. When I here put in the minus, that means that it should go to the uh, to the standard output. I will explain just in a second just in a not in a second maybe half an hour what that means for and then i'm going to the pipe to the ssh create ssh connection and on that connection when it has been established i already get everything what comes to my uh, full tar to my standard input for this cat command and put everything to the archive it's that fairly easy with one single mistake there should be zip as well yeah because we are zipping them oh you can so here you have to explicitly say what kind of algorithm you are using because there is nothing uh, for tart to make a guess where it how it goes but we will come back to this as well i will i promise you when whenever i show you what the redirect means and how it works and how cat can be used to do the, the redirects so i will come back at once uh, once more to this protocol to this star command and we will see that how to make the tar archive on the fly and so in some situation it will save you some time for instance you don't need to create the tar archive on your local file system but you can start creating tar archive and piping everything what comes out by SSH to a remote file system, thus saving your space uh, locally. Okay. And then uh, let's see where we are. Where, here we are. So exercise 1.3, I guess. I guess I have nothing else in between. Yes, so exercise 1.3. So let's say that we will have how many minutes? How many minutes we will have? Let's say that we will have something like 15, 20 minutes for that, 20 minutes, and then we will go through the exercise and then we will have a break. And actually, yeah, 
apologize once again for yesterday. Yesterday I have forgotten about the lunch break, so this time I have both myself and notes that don't forget the breaks. I will not this time. So exercise 1.3, it's now your time, 20 minutes. As usually, feel free to use the notes and we will reply to them as well. And if there will be something that needs to be pronounced, then I will also make it make it sound. Okay, 20 minutes. And we will be back at 15, uh, at uh, quarter to one. Okay, let's see what was on the list. So the first of all on the list there was the find command and I was just looking at myself for the find uh, manual. So I'm looking for the permissions because there was something readable and writable and CD modes actually right over here I have already a ready to go example how that could be done. Okay, that's well enough for me. I send it to the bigger just to see what's going on. Now what I want to do it, I want to do it in the home. So home for me is still lab. You remember from the yesterday's sessions, it's that going to be the uh, special character for the home directory. And then it's a file. Then that means that I'm typing here, it's a file. It's also should have some kind of readable and writable by everyone. So what I'm saying here is that I'm saying that my permission of this file that I'm looking for should be minus then everyone or others. And that should be equal read and write. Let's see, what do we have over here? Uh, essentially, just for the security reason, I don't have any file in my home directory that would be readable uh, writable, but let's make for the sake of just to demonstrate it. So I put some others plus write and what we have over here, some file test. Okay, so let's try to search once again and voila, we actually got exactly that file. So that's correct. But then the next stage is actually was uh, advanced level, but let us do it. So we can use the execution option of the find and say that, okay, we actually want this to be replaced. And what I want here is that I need to say that everything what you find over here should have no writable access for others. And we finish up this construct like this. Okay, we apply it and then let's try once again. And so my the, my file, which was once fixed, it's over here. So that was the number one, number one. Then number two, make it target zap ahead of any of your directory when done, list the archive content. So we have done it already several times with the demo space, but let's try it once again. <clears throat> So I'm doing the tar, TAF, and I'm saying here that it's going to be the demo space uh, dot tar dot set. And then I'm saying here that it's going to be, uh, it's going to be the archive of this current directory. Okay. So now you can see that it should be there. Demo space is there. And then I was about to list the stuff in there. So listing would go with the minus T A F and then the archive name. So here you go. You get the directory listed on my screen. Then extract only one particular file to subdirectory from the archive. Oh, I guess I don't remember exactly how to do that. Uh, so if I do the extraction, uh, as far as I remember, then I don't need to know exactly what's going on. For instance, I want to instruct uh, which one? Well, let the hello show once again. So if I want to extract this one, 
as far as remember I put it over here but then do not overlap with the current one I can do it let me just uh, put it somewhere to the folder one for instance folder one okay let's see what happens okay and that should appear now in the folder one no yes here just the question where it has been copied what it did for me it did demo space hello sh let me do the trick forward <laughs> So I'm doing this from the demo space and I'm trying to copy it over here. It's still not here, interesting. So I think it's still copying with me somewhere else. Demo space, hello, SH. So it says me that it has been extracted. Ah, okay, okay, I'm doing it the wrong way, definitely. So what I'm doing is that I'm just do it with the TAF while I should have used this, uh, of course, XAF. So that's a minor mistake. So now you see what I've done here. So I do the, I say that, okay, extraction from this archive and only this file, and it should go to this folder one. So now I should be able to see that in folder one, this hello has appeared not, okay? Uh, so I'm doing something wrong, essentially. Oh, it's still here. Folder one is still there. <clears throat> nice. Okay, so let's go. Let's go through the rest of the exercise. And when you have a break, I will uh, find it out and show it to you what I'm doing wrong over here. So I didn't check them out, just was thinking that I can do it online from the scratch. Transfer just created archive using SFTP. So we've done it already several times, but let's do it once again. So I'm doing this SFTP and I'm doing this time it to say to Triton because we already Triton.alto.fi, and then you will see how it goes. Yeah, Triton is busy, so login in takes time. It's now connected, and now I can see LLS demo space, demo space archive. It's on my current stuff. Okay. And then I want to put it to the remote directory. Demo space target, and I'm somewhere in my home directory. So on our, it's there. And simply, I don't need it anymore. I just do it for the sake of demonstration. Demo space space RM. Okay, that has been removed and I can exit. Okay, that was just for the sake of demonstration how to do that. Okay, now you have 10 minutes break. 10 minutes break and let's get back to the things quarter past one. Okay, hopefully you're back. Hopefully your legs are stretched. And now let me give you one hint that I just found myself. Sorry, let me give you my hint. So uh, I tried to do something with the tar and actually I've done pretty much everything correct, except that I forgot that actually minus C 
it's the um, uh, it's the way the more order of these options does matter so I, if i put something like minus c it will be only applicable to the files that come after but not before so that was my mistake but now you see i'm extracting only one file and put it only uh, also into this specific directory that i want to put it and here you go if you look at the folder one you will see that there will be created demo space and in demo space will be hello sh so that's important from the tar perspective or from the user perspective to know that tar will also will always try to not always try to but it will do uh, uh, it will do save the path so that's the way actually if your directory is being name subdirectory then another subdirectory your file will go there you will not extract only one file but you will extract actually the whole directory structure of that file where, where, where it uh, used to be in the original in the original directory tree so now we are getting back to the next section and uh, not back getting further so we are going to the next section so next section is the command line utilities it doesn't really bother me to tell you already i did already several times it doesn't really bother to tell you even more uh, that bash is uh it's just it's lots of utilities and the, the bash allows to work together so it's working as a glue in between them and this time i will just show you then we'll have a collection of proofs how it will work so then you see once again a list of commands that we some of them we have already used, some of them are new to you, but this is a kind of collection of the um, those ones that you will most probably meet at some point if you will be working with the bash. There is more. Actually, the amount of the uh, the amount of the comments on the bash uh, on the on the on the Linux that uh, is just the there is no pretty much well probably there is kind of limit, but I mean there are hundreds of them. And every single every single uh, package that you install uh, will bring you even more binaries, which can be used to, from the command line. But uh, let me point you to several of them. Actually, of those which are here, I have named a few that I would say would be most useful. Uh, would be most useful for the for the daily use so here is uh, some of them i will explain them one by one while we are, will be going through the examples but then what i definitely suggest to you is that i have put here the link to the cheat sheet it's the on the notes and if you click on the cheat sheet you will see the kind of a4 with a very brief description and examples of what is what and what is what is doing so but uh the best way is to do it is to do it with the examples so one example that we have already seen is was the disk usage and i have repeated it already several times and you can actually write it down for yourself so <clears throat> uh, the best thing is that uh, one of the instruments to use between the commands is to use piping so let me explain what's happening over here first of all we are running the disk usage command and telling it okay produce us the result and in the human readable uh, format and we need this uh, the uh, sizes of the all the directories and subdirectories including those which start with the one dot when we send everything to the standard uh, output and then we pipe it, uh, then the standard output is picked up by the command sort. And again, we are saying here that that's the format that comes out, that's the human readable. And then we pipe it once again, and we get the pipeline, which finally we get this, uh, we pipe it once again to the tail and say that, okay, we need only 10 last, uh, 10 last lines of the output. So that's a perfect pipeline, or that's a perfect uh, one-liner. So this uh, 
message over here is harmless. It's simply because we don't have dot files over here. We can touch one just to have and to get our the not get this error. So that's perfect. That's one of the one liners that you may think you can use it uh, anytime, anywhere. So easy when you have some problems with the quota with the space, you come down and you just run it and check it out and you are done. So another one thing that I really like is like VC. VC is a counter. It counts everything. For instance, if I want to see that all the locked in users, well, this case, it's probably not that huge, but I can still count the lines. If you're on Kosh, run it as well and you will see that uh, what's going on in there and how many users have been logged in it's actually one of the uh, a good kind of task a good uh, kind of problem for the exercise that if you want to try to count the number of locked users and even make a kind of uh, list of unique users because some users may have a couple of sections sessions, sessions uh, connect uh, connections so that's a good thing for the pipelining uh, on the bash so let me uh, try one thing i have prepared one single file over here that's the finnish university students csv format you can cut it and see what's the inside so that's very simple it's a year then organization number of students male and female it's just a dummy format uh, i mean the numbers are realistic from 2018 uh, but I'm using it just in such a compact way uh, for the sake of demonstration of the uh, uh, brush utilities, what they can. And so let's say that I want to get only some parameters out of this. And so one of the comments for myself that can be useful can be uh, uh, cut. So we, we, when you cut something, that's the... And then you say explicitly what kind of delimiter is used. So in my case, that's going to be this uh, semicolon. And then I'm saying specifically what kind of fields I want to get out of this. So imagine that cut will online will just within the program will cut them by column. And they say that I need number two, for instance, and then the total number of users, uh, total number, sorry, of students. So I'm here putting here that give me back two and three. Uh, no, so the file is still missing. So file finish university students. Okay, that's the output. Nicely looking. Um, for instance, we can easily make it even more nicely looking. So if we use the column and say that, okay, do the evaluation and they uh, what's we need to put also the separator over here. The separator once again will be this semicolon. And so you can see that actually if that would be in this way, that would be looking that nice. But it doesn't look like nice because we're having this kind of um, comment in that CSV file which we want to get rid of. How to do that? So now basically we are starting building the pipeline over here using the utilities uh, that we have so to get rid of the uh, some line we can use grep grep with the negative uh, option minus v and then we say okay so that's the grep minus v and then we want to say that we want everything but so and we pipe it then but everything but that would mean for us you will see this comment pretty soon up there it's everything which is not started with the we started with this uh, equal sign okay so now we've got rid of this first very first comment from the file and our final list is looking much better what I can do else, so if I, for instance, uh, wanna wanna get uh, something which is 
sorted out for me. So I can also put the sort function. So for instance, I want to sort it and I want to sort it by the number of students. And then that means that I can't, I should also put here the seven meter. Um, what was it, semicolon. And then I want to say that my field to be sorted is a number, which one in this case, it's going to be number two. Um, is it correct? I guess so. And then, okay, what's wrong here is that the sort command doesn't know that it should be numeric this, because the number, uh, the field number two is actually a number. Okay, now we're getting much better. And we can even tell to the sort that do it in the recursive way. So put the output, uh, the biggest one first. And so here you go. And we get the number of users sorted this way, while the command is already looking like this. It's pretty long, pretty long. And then we can still go further and we can say that, okay, we actually only want to see the top five. And we can see that, okay, give me only top five from the, uh, from the list of these lines, okay? And by the end of the day, we can even give them all a number, okay? And so you can see that actually that's the way to get these commands to work together. So first, you know what the command does so that you know where to find the information about these uh, options. And third, you just do the right uh, order and put them in such a way that you are getting the results the way you want to. It's quite common in the bash scripting that you are having some kind of output from some kind of program and you just need to grip and format and structure them somehow, sort them somehow to make it uh, to make it uh, more readable or more understandable or more compact or etc. You continue the list. So that's one of the things that I wanted to demonstrate you. And then let's go further. And one more thing that I would like to introduce you was the redirects. So we have already seen this sign uh, more or less, the, the signs which are quite common, but the, from the Bash perspective, it's not the arithmetical sign, but it's the um, redirection. So when you see something like this command, then redirection and then the file name, that means that this output of this command will go to that file. And you can see in other words, in other situations when it's doubled. So what's the difference between them is that in the first case, you will replace that file txt. And if you double the sign, you will just append that file. So basically the content of that file will say, but at the end of that file, you will add more. Ooh. And then there is another one thing, uh, it's the standard input. So let me say um, yet a few words about the standard input and output. So that's the, the thing that you probably need to know and you will know anyway. So at some point, or well, every time when you run a program or a command, uh, Bash will by default will create for you also the standard output standard input and standard error streams. So, and streams can be manipulated in a sense that uh, that's exactly what we are doing right here. We are redirecting the stream. So we are redirecting one to the file. When you do the, when you deal with the standard output, or you can also redirect file to the commands. That's also possible. So in this case, we're using the redirection for the, from the standard input and the only difference is that here that actually the, your program should be aware of that. So if, uh, for instance, a standard output can go to a file in any way, so it's uh, program even uh, that may, that may, may, may not know about this. But in, the, in case of standard input, if you want to try to redirect something to the address, then the program actually should be aware of that. So that should be realized uh, on the programming level. And so 
that means that not all of the products can do this and we will actually work way more in detail with these uh, concepts during the uh, uh, shell scripting course so that will be i will tell you well more how to do that and how to write the scripts using these redirections as an option but let's go to the example let's go to the examples like uh, try the first one you remember we were opening the file uh, with the nano and we were adding the some information over there but you can also do it in such a way like over here you just simply execute the command like echo for instance and just do the simple redirection to the hello world and what will happen over here is that file if it does not exist it will be created and if it does exist it will be overwritten so let's try it and we let's put it this way and i still redirect it to the same file and you can see that actually this has been rather rather uh, overwritten and let's see what will happen if i double the redirection size you can see that it actually has been appended so the new line has appeared after the content of already existing of after already existing content so that's different that's the way to remember that let's play with uh, some other utilities so let's make a few more files over here so we are creating for file abc and let's create the file xyz uh, so that will be as and two so you can also list them both you remember we can use the brace notation so both of them are here abc xyz so one thing to play with would be join them together it's that easy you can do it with the cut command and redirection and creating the new file and you can see that file will become like that so they already joined so these are not two different files but these are one file with the content of the both of them okay that's concatenation can be done and uh, then the next one so truncation truncation very useful comment if you want to work with the uh, files and when you want to replace for instance some parameters some characters with another one so what i'm doing over here is that i'm saying that every single space so i'm here saying that my first character space needs to be replaced with a new line so basically what i want to get i want to get that every single letter a b c would appear on the new line and so i'm saying here that my i am redirecting the contact content of the file one to the command and then i will redirect it back the output of that command to the file four and let's see what will happen and what will happen next file four will become like a b c and file one will remain like that so there is the alternative which often used so i would say that people uh, often ignore this uh, opportunity to use the standard input redirection and they just use the pipe for the cut but the uh, effect the result is exactly the same so you can see that we can do the same for the file too so we just output it we pipe it to the, the, the truncation command and we uh, redirected to the file five and let's see what happens so what we get with the file five you can see that the result is exactly the same like in the first case so these are two alternatives but you just must know that they both do the same then let's say that i want to introduce you the paste command so we have two files two files and then i want to join them paste one to another one by line by line that's easy to do with the paste and so let's see what's going on with the file six so you can see that actually we have used the delimiter the separator like column over here we assigned and then we just 
join the lines one by one. In the same way, if you would like to have something else, like telemetry, I don't know, could be just the uh, some other character, or maybe just space. And then you can find that file seven is actually looking like this. So, and on top of that, there are others. I'm not now going into the all of them. You will have them from the cheat sheet. You will find them on the manual and you will find them while you are uh, will be going, will be diving deeper and deeper into the uh, bash. The only thing, actually, yes, I want to say this one. So def no, it's very important and very often used on the command line. It's a special device, def no. Everything what you are redirecting to the def no just disappear. And so if you don't want to see some output of the command, so let's get back to that disk usage. Where did I have it? Uh, disk usage, yeah. And you remember, for instance, in case I would have no, or the, uh, I would have no the, this dot file. Dot file is there, but let's say that I have no a dot file. And you remember we've got that error message that you cannot access because it doesn't, it's harmless. It just doesn't find any file would, would start with the dot and it complains over here. And we can easily say that, okay, we don't really want to see this. So we've got, uh, <laughs> no, so now I'm explaining what has happened. So now we have redirected the standard output, but I said you already that there are free streams. Every single one process will have three streams. One is standard output, standard input, and then the standard output for the errors. And they all will have the, its own file descriptor. Don't go that deeply yet, but just to remember, let it be just a stream for you right now. And you can redirect them in the way you want to. And I'm saying here that if I'm redirecting the stream number two, then Bash knows that I'm talking about the error messages. And Bash knows that if I'm redirecting the stream number two, I don't want to see the error messages. And you can see that even if we still don't have this dot file, the error message has gone. So that's the beauty of redirections. That's the beauty of the streaming of uh, with the, uh, having the standard input, standard output, and standard output for the errors. Good. Okay, now you should be able to understand for sure what this command is doing. So that's what I was trying to push you already recently, but now, but now, let's go for it once again. So I will redirect it to the standard output. And let's say that I wanna do this, my demo space once again. Uh, my demo space once again and then i go to the kosh and i have my login name to the kosh and i have my name over here kosh out.fi i mean the not my name but the name of the server which i want to contact and then what i'm doing over here is that i'm sending everything what comes from tar let it be the, the correct syntax as well, uh, demo space. And I'm not having here uh, an archive name, but this minus says to the tar that everything what comes should go to the standard output. And that means that pipe will just redirect everything, uh, will pipe everything, the correct uh, word would be the word for this, it will pipe everything to the SSH command. And SSH is smart enough to realize, okay, it's something that comes from the standard input and let's see what the user wants to do with that. And we will run cat, cat on that server already. And cat is smart enough as well. So it knows that, okay, something is coming through the SSH to my standard inputs. What to do with that? Okay, we can actually use the redirection. 
and we can use the redirection and we can say that this redirection should do the should create the file so basically what happens over there is cat is doing nothing that just putting everything what comes to the standard input to the file and it happens that this standard input is nothing else than an output from the tar and so that's the way we should actually say that this archive should be become the star gazette so let's see what will happen i will run the tar I will run the SSH and no errors I've seen so far. If I go to the Kosh and let's see whether my file that I have created just now is there. Oh, it's there. And let's check that actually it's the one that we expect. Yes, and file tells us that's the tar archive. And let's even more. Uh, let it be even more kind of suspicious and let's see that what exactly is there is it correct one yeah it's probably a correct one so now you have one trick more in your pocket tar thing with the ssh and uh, so copying everything from one computer to another without having uh, uh, any tar archive on the local drive that will help your uh, hopefully that will help you at some point to save some space. Okay, time for the Prosimo. I have another one for you. So this one will be uh, was one of the that from this section. So let's see what you know, what you remember. Um, so we'll look at this ones at the questions and try to try to realize so you don't have multiple choices it should be only one so uh, just as a, a remark to you because we did this already several times uh, as a demo if you were listening carefully so you know the answer Oh, somehow Prisma doesn't show the comment itself, but you can see the comment on the on the shell. Well, do your choice. It doesn't mean that if majority is answering one is true, is true, is taking one option, it doesn't mean it's always right. Just think carefully. Okay, 10 seconds more to think about this and we are still waiting for let it be at least something like 50 magical number this time just to keep going and we are already very close to the um, to the uh, actually another break but before we go for another break, I still want to check you with you yet another section, the grouping one. So one more, one more reply and we will go through. Oh, 
okay so let's see so that was the program that was the command what's happening over here so we pick up the file name named file name one we just output everything all the content of that file and we pipe it to another command so actually to the file name number one happens nothing except that it's been read and it's been streamed to another command so we crop it uh, this command grabs the standard input and it sees this okay so we have uh, all the uh, single spaces needs to be replaced with the new line character and then one one it will do do it just line by line and then whenever it's done every single line will be outputted to the file name too so the majority is correct so that's the uh, the last option over here okay so grouping uh before you uh, actually another one two interesting examples i don't remember where from i grab it but yeah i can't stand from going for this one as well so you see what's happening over here so we are getting the newest file so essentially it's a bash history because that's the newest based on the modification so the newest one it doesn't mean that it has been created but when it has been modified very recently so what's happening over here again this kind of new liners you usually start building from the uh, from the very first command so first you get the list of files without any specific uh specific uh crap like uh, meta information so but here is uh, we get it also sorted by time it's already something but still we need to make sure that actually no one of them is a directory and we can do it with a grep we will come back to the grep recently uh, in just in a second but here is one option so minus v means negation in grep and then minus uh, capital e that means that it's the advanced mode of grepping so where we can use already regular expressions for instance and here we exactly do the regular expressions and here we are saying that it will not start with either uh, it will not be either something with a slash in it or it will not start with uh, the um, uh, doc sign which means that it's the uh, link in this case not only the link it's also it's us well don't remember it's not the link it's something else ah it's a, yeah it's actually that means that's a link yeah exactly so that's already enough for us so we grab out filter out the directories and links and then we want to have only one single file and here we are saying that it should be only one so the major it would be like this but had also accept this kind of syntax and so voila we are getting the file which is the newest one in the current directory sometimes it's useful for you so feel free to pick it up we can also pick up for instance the top five of these files and see sometimes when you are doing the changes or something has happened you just want to see the files which have been modified recently okay grouping grouping is somewhat uh, <clears throat> i would say that's already advanced information but i still thought that we probably have it on this part of the course curly brackets then the command names and then the file name so what you need to remember for instance i do the ls l yeah on my list or just ls let's say that i want a list of my directory l and i want to even say that d do it one line one line at a time and then for instance i'm making a snapshot but i want to also have a date so I put a date and then I use a separator. Separator on the line is semicolon. So everything what happens before the semicolon white bash is considered to be one command and everything what comes after is another command and then another command and then there can be another command, etc. So the commands can be as many as um, as you want to. 
what will happen this way? So I see that both commands have been executed date first, and then the output of ls. Nice. Uh, actually, let me use even the previous one, so that would be also a little bit more useful. So now you see that I've got the date and then the name of the file. Oh, I'm doing this wrong. Name of the file, which is the newest one. Cool. But what if I want to put it into the file? And I want to, for example, I'm doing the snapshot and let it go exactly like snapshot. And what will happen over here, that snapshot will have nothing else except snapshot. Oh, okay, so that's the file which called snapshot <laughs> eventually. So that's my bad. And okay, let's do it this way. Uh, so now I have two files to go. And then, well, let it be this way. So I do still one, but then I create it to the upper directory. Okay, complicated for myself. But anyway, here I do the explanation. So in this case, this redirection will be attributed only to the last commands, but not to the both. But I still need both. If I would need both, I would probably have to do something like this date snapshot yes and then the command itself snapshot and that would be even looking like this because I need to I need to be able to not override but add up in the file and so now you can see that actually this is pretty much what I wanted but the structure I have it written a little bit ugly, a little bit complicated, and I definitely don't want this kind of snapshot to appear everywhere. And for this situation, we have grouping. So you put the curly brackets over here around the around the commands, spaces in between curly brackets and the end of the command are important. That's the first remark over here. And then the end of the command is also important. Otherwise, the syntax will be wrong and bash will give you the error message. But what happens over here is that since these commands are already grouped, the output from both of them, from group of the commands, will go to the snapshot. And so you can see that actually this has been updated. And both uh, outputs from both commands are over here. So that's one thing. Uh, this will happen within the same uh, within the same bash session. There is another one option. You can actually use the uh, parentheses if I pronounce it correctly. Uh, and in this situation, you will actually run another one bash instance. Why it's useful? It's not that useful in this case because it doesn't uh, have too much uh, of the uh, stuff to do. But let me show you one example which you find uh, useful uh, quite easily. So there was the uh, example with the tar command. So for instance, I want to make a full, uh, how to say, a full um, copy of the directory tree copy cp minus pr whatever it does the job only halfway but if you want to do it properly you can do it with the tar and there is a tricky way so for instance my current directory should be sent to the pipe to the standard output and should be piped to another tar but it's not that easy so i still don't want to tar and untar within the same directory I need to come up with the idea how to change the directory uh, within the same pipeline. And the tricky thing here is that you can use this uh, parenthesis and it will give you the uh, thing that you can actually CD some other directory. And 
and if everything is correct let it be not that far away you can just untar everything that comes to you and it will go to the uh, to that uh, to that directory so uh, uh, maybe this stuff is a little bit too complicated for you right now but then at least i had in mind that i should have told you that this kind of option exists and then probably at some point when you will be at, at some kind of deeper level with the bash you will find it useful as well but anyway here the grouping command but the message to take away from this section that there are two ways of doing this so with the curly brackets and with the parentheses and the difference between that this one the later one will be uh, will create an external uh, bash uh, processes for you and you can do pretty much everything within these processes without any interaction with the, your current session okay and then another one thing that i wanted to tell you is that because I already told you about the couple of streams, you remember standard input, standard output, and standard error output. What that means? That means that you there is also techniques how to join the standard output and standard error output. And the principle is called, if this is the redirection of simple redirection of only standard output, then adding the upper, uh, ampersand over here will do the redirection of both. So let's see how it works. If I do the LSLA, and then for instance, if I do the file, what's the file one? Yeah. Or oh, file seven, it exists. And redirection will go to the file seven meta information for instance we are getting some meta information about file 7 doesn't make much sense but it only makes sense for the sake of demonstration so here you go okay it's in the file but what will happen if i will somehow try to list a file which does not exist for instance i will be getting the error message and this essentially this file itself that i'm trying to create does not exist or it does exist but it uh, has zero nothing came into there how to do that how to actually output everything what i want there including the standard error is to add the ampersand over here and so in this situation nothing will come to my screen but everything will go to the file eight and also the error messages. So that's the thing that you may think about. Uh, in the same way, you can use the piping. So piping like this will send only the standard output, but piping with the uh, ampersand will also pipe the standard error output. So all the streams will go away. So use it when you need it. Quite often you need this, but um, let's see that I can come up with example, for instance, that I'm having right here, it's pink. So when I want to pink something, I want to pink, for instance, the Google DNS. So it's 100% time up or 99.99999999 up. So you must be pretty sure that if this guy is not up, then something wrong with your network okay and then if something happens i don't know maybe for instance let's imagine that it doesn't work i mean this ip doesn't exist this is why it will produce the error message so now you see that actually you are <clears throat> not interested uh, you're not interested in the error outputs so as i told you previously you can say just the Uh, just the error itself or then you can send both of them at once sometimes it's useful and let's keep this comment in mind we will use just booleans right after the break so let's have 10 minutes break 
and we will get back to the uh, uh, to the material at uh, 10 past two o'clock and then there will be grapping there will be uh, evaluations so there will be this kind of basic conditionals that can be used on the command line and then exercise another one and then let's see will we have what how much time we will have for anything else but anyway it's the break right now and we back we get back 10 past two okay so the legs are ready to i mean the brain and legs are ready to go further so evaluations separators and the grip commands I picked up the grip as I mean if you have seen if you have noticed during the whole course that I have picked up several of those utilities like uh tar like uh, what was the find there was the uh, SSH and SSP there was this um, there was something else okay but anyway so these are the these were the commands which are more or less common and you can find on any installation if you go to the Linux, and they are really useful. So a grip is also one of them. But before we touch the grip, let me also do some explanation about the other things. So to some degree, everything, uh, some things have been already covered, and probably explanation will not take that long. But one thing that I would like to say, so uh, you have online when you are doing something, how do I say this? So uh, every single command has a kind of return code. What that means? That means that if something happens and it uh, happens correctly, so for instance, I'm doing ls minus l. So I don't want right now the output. I just need to be, need, uh, want to want to get the, just want to get the, um, the last uh, last command uh, last command uh, uh, return code so this return code can be seen with the echo uh, dollar sign and then question mark and if it's zero then as a pos as opposite to many other programming languages in bash that means it's positive so that means success okay let's see that i'm trying to like last time <laughs> at least something which doesn't exist so eventually command should end up with the error an error would come but along with the error it would come non-zero return code so this guy which is set after execution of the last command will be always the return command after the completion the return code of the command after the completion so uh and then on top of that on top of that uh if you are the words so the numeration over here uh makes sense so in principle if you know it if it's not zero then that means that's already uh, some problems but then how exactly these problems can be addressed it's already up to the documentation of that particular program that you are using so this error messages uh, this error code can be somewhere explained or maybe not i mean if it's the easiest one you just put that the error code is one and that only means that's the error and something went wrong and then if everything went okay then that's the zero and that's it that's fine okay so that's thing to remember because the next step we need to have conditions so what's the conditions these are kind of boolean operators uh, double ampersand and double pipes but uh, we don't really call them double pipes or double ampersands we just uh, uh, call them uh, okay false uh, fair, true and false so what that means you put the double ampersands after the command execution, like for instance in this case. And you say, in other words, if the exit code is zero, then 
execute the next command. And I can say, for instance, file exists. Let it be this way, yeah? You can see that nothing has happened when I'm trying the file which, is doesn't, which does not exist. But if I try the file which does exist, this command gets executed. That's the whole idea. But you can even do it better. So you can put all of them uh, on the same command. So, and then for instance, you can say that it does not exist. And let's see what's happened if we go for the file which does not exist. So what that means for us? That means for us that it opens the doors to make these kind of small one-liners and do the check. So one check in particular that I loved a lot. So let me see that what I can do with the pink. So let's say that we have a pink, yeah? We don't want any output from the pink, but we do want this kind of construct. So I copy it over here and I say in here that, okay, if pink goes full, we are online. Yes. And if pink returns me something which is non-zero, I want to say that we are fucked. No, we are offline. Sorry. Uh, we are offline. So at the moment, I have a connection, 1.1, but let's emulate the situation when you don't have a ping. So I don't exactly, uh, cannot really stop the uh, Google DNS server anyhow, but I can emulate that I cannot ping it. So for instance, I put here the wrong uh, IP address and voila, we are offline. So that's my very brief, but uh, I would say that's uh, very fruitful inputs uh, on this uh, <clears throat> on these uh, booleans. So what we have over here uh, can be used pretty much everywhere and now. So what to take away a message first of all uh, that every single command will produce some uh, some error code. That's the part of the bash. It's not even part of the command. It's part of the bash. And then you can use it with this uh, booleans, negative, uh, true, and false. So this one stands for two ampersands, stands for if it's okay, and two vertical lines, two pipes, it stands that it's logical no. So it means that it has failed somehow. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to say here. So the thing is, quite simple and you can also see the over here the description and also I have said already previously about the semicolon which is a separator on the line then let's let me introduce yet another uh, very unique program which is called grep and later on you will certainly find it useful I would say that's cat grep these are two probably that you will use most often when you are working with the outputs and the trying to get the output of some other file. So the grep is simple, but complex. So in the simplest way, you just put the what you're looking for and you put where you are looking at. You can do also the, with the comments and redirect everything from the command to the grip and again search with some kind of uh, search word over here. But then how you prepare this one uh, and how do you search it? That's already, already a little bit tricky. So uh, let me say that what we have over here. So I have this Finnish university file and let's say that I wanna grip everything that would have, for instance, Yuliopisto. And then let's, I want to grab something which will have all. Oh, that's the easiest one. That's the easiest one. 
מאפלן, let's go to the say that I want to do what? Uh, let me say that I want to do both at once and then I will I would like to use the uh, uh, expression like this. So for instance, I say here really all this to as well and I put the pipe over here and this is already the which comes with the situation. okay, that's the probably the uh, uh, either of them can be part of that line that I'm looking for. And so you are getting both of them. Then you can use something like, um, for instance, if you want to do the case in intense insensitive, then you put the minus i. If you want to look for the uh, special word only, so if you are looking for this uh, uh, word separately, it's not part of the word. So and you can see this has been limited. For instance, if I. Uh, Previously, Thaide Urepesto was also on the list. Now it's missing because I'm using this minus V. So I am saying that exactly this word or this word should be separate one. Uh, what's ex What else? So now I want to say that, for instance, this line that I'm looking for should be, I don't know, uh, say that you remember my grip that I'm using uh, that I was using previously, and let me just uh, say it once again. So there was this uh, uh, comment over here. So I want to see everything except that comment, uh, that comment line. So what I'm doing over here is that I'm using negation minus v, and then I'm saying here explicitly that actually anything which would start. So this hat stands for the beginning of line. So and I'm saying here the beginning of line cannot be this equal so equal may be somewhere in the uh, in the in the text but not the very beginning of them so and now you can see that actually i am outputting everything but not this one and so i have also some kind of empty line over here so i don't want the empty line either what i'm saying here that okay let's use the regular expression once again and let's say that another option that except I don't want comments. I don't want also the empty line. How to say the empty line? Empty line would be, it will start and will end. And in between them, nothing. So that means that's the empty line from the uh, grid. So now you can see, oh, maybe that's not the empty line. Now we can see that what kind of line is there. There is another one, uh, utility cat. Well, utility is the same, but another one option for that utility is my minus capital A, which will tell you and will show you what exactly is the is the uh, what's what's the hidden number over here. And so, in my situation, the hidden number over here is this uh, uh, M. So, and if I want to get rid of that. Uh, what do I tell? So I need to get rid of that as well. First, uh, it's some special character which I don't remember which one is it. Uh, I can use it with a truncation uh later on let's say i don't remember it right now so what's the special character for that was but it just just let's keep it for a moment i put it for myself to remember how to replace the special character and get this one out okay let's continue let's don't get focused on this one I'm pretty sure that must be something simple over there. So what's the pattern as well? So exactly one, for instance, if you're looking for something and then you want to see only 
only only only only only the pattern itself so you, you must put minus o and actually if you go to the grip manual page you will find out then how to build very complex syntaxes like for instance if i have a few emails here is one of the example if i have a few emails then what will happen if i want to grab only the emails from the file list so let me uh, let me do this example for you so for instance i have a list of uh stuff list let's call it this way beam stuff list and i'm starting to create you don't need to do it right now you will just see it on my demo space in the in, you know, on my web page but so the problem is over here that for instance if i want to create some user auto.defy another user uh, user uh, google gmail gmail dot com then then and i call them like this and let's see what will happen over here so i need to grab the email addresses only so i'm copy pasting this one from the stuff list and what will happen so you see that my list is actually a little bit more than just the mail list it's also the name it could be something like uh, addresses uh, maybe the telephone numbers etc but here the grip is giving to me very complex regular expression which you will definitely find useful when you start building them on your own but the regular expression it's it's another world i mean you can spend hours if not days or weeks building them and seeing that how they don't work and there is a, actually a joke also about this that if people think that they can solve the problem with the regular expression then they definitely they just got another problem to build the correct regular expression so but here just the explanations that's already the working one to explain you how it does so i'm saying that okay i'm going to use a regular expression then i'm saying that it's the case intensity insensitive and then i'm saying that i need to get only actually the match of the grab and not the whole line and here i'm building the regular expression for the emails and so i'm saying that this one will start with uh, uh, some space or with some uh, limit with some uh, delimiter and then i'm saying here that it should be alphanumeric then it could also be dot dash percentage plus minus so basically everything and then i'm saying that any of this or any combination of these characters can be in then i'm saying that's the uh, uh, doc sign and then i'm saying how the domain should look like it's complex but that's the regular expression and for those of you who's been doing something with the python with the Perl, or even the, with some other languages so you already pretty much familiar with this ones and the uh my proper purpose over here is just to demonstrate to you that everything is actually possible okay uh but i think i'm i can't really tell you anything else or it doesn't make much sense to tell you anything else i would like you to try it out and to try it out let's go for the exercise and the exercise is 1.4 it's a little bit easier than usually but uh, let's see what we are up for i would say that we should have enough for this 15 minutes but then we will have also the person open and you will be able to click and say that's at what stage you are okay so the exercise is yours with exercise exercise 1.4 
for till what 15 minutes so it's going to be 14 45 and we will be pretty much at the end and so i will see that if i will have still five minutes left to tell you about uh, about the condition uh, about the initialization files okay well we need to keep going just to get finished in time mm -hmm. let's see what do you have here on the exercise 1.4 make pipe that counts number of files in directories you can keep doing while I'm speaking and that's if you're interested just take a look at the screen so we know and actually yeah there was one thing that noticed that I haven't changed the bash history so most of the commands that I've used in the yesterday's file yet so just to let you know they are not uh, and they are not forgotten anywhere so but I have just switched back to the to the right day Okay, so the make a path that counts number of files directories. So you say ls, and you can do it with the l, or you can do it with the one, which just give you the list like this. And then you can count them with the vc. And in order to count the lines, that would be vc minus l. Okay, and then if you're also expecting to get uh, counted with the those dot files, this construct that I have shown it already, already used several times, you can use it in the way that dot, and then those ones as well. So you can see that actually. There is no these dot files, but even if there would be, let it be once again remember i have removed one <clears throat> so here you go that's the way to count the directories and the files including dot ones okay what's the next grab directories out of the ls minus l so we have to find out what's the difference what differs the directories from the file so difference is comes over here so all the directories that start with the d and other words i can say that okay i need to grab it and i need to say that my line starts with the d and this can be said with this hat once again we have used it already over the demo and so here you go with the several directories that we have grab all but blank lines on the man cat grip oh Okay, man, cat. Okay, and then let's say that I want to grab all but blank lines. So I use negation, and then I'm using this one that I have told you already. So now we have got rid of the everything except well basically we are just getting the text only and all the empty files have gone okay what's next grip using pipes and commons echo trunk find double words out of my to do do list word this i don't remember exactly how to do there was nothing so what do I do here? So first of all, I would like to make them uh, one word per line. So this, you know how to do already. I do the uh, this way. So uh, no, I cut, not cut, echo. Echo, 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 echo. Let's see, we will be able this way to do, okay. We don't need the don't need the quotation at all. So we've got this one, and now we need to use the unique, unique, and then what's using pipes commands? Unique find doubled words out of okay unique. 
but then we actually want to find the double ones. Uh, I need to man the unique. I don't remember what was the option for that. I think all duplicate flies. It's minus D. Okay, here you go. So that would be the correct one. Echo unique minus D. Okay. Uh, you are on the multi system user, multi user system count unique locked in. V users gives you a list of account or login users. Many of them have several sessions open command to discover card soft VC. So now I need to go to some other guy. Kosh, for instance. Okay. I'm looking at the number of users. So I can use the minus H. So in order, I want to just get rid of the header. So now let me count first how many lines altogether. Then I want to cut only the first one. How to do that is that I set cut and I put a delimiter uh, space, whatever it is. And I said, I only need the field number one. So here I'm getting the number of users. Now I want to sort them just normally because that's the uh, uh, just letters. So I can sort them like this and then I can use the unique commands and I can see that I will only get the unique entries. And now I can count them once again. So actually you remember there was 80 something, now it's only 45. So that you can see that actually many users have double sessions, but unique of them only 45. So I will copy it over here. And so that you so that you also see that it's uh, it's going like this, so that it will stay also in the in the um, uh, bash history. Okay, and the last one was kind of additional comment that you can leave as a home exercise for yourself. We have seven minutes to go, but I still have something to tell you. So you are doing pretty much uh, else online, but then sometimes, sometimes you want to put the uh, environment and want to keep your environment forever. For instance, you have set some variables. For instance, you have set some something like you mask. You have uh, defined some aliases. You have defined some functions and you want to keep it. How to do that? It's easy in every single uh, home directory must be such file, for instance, for the bash. That's called bash rc. Or the other option is bash profile. So one is working when you are logging in normally through the graphical user interface. Another one is working when you are logging in through the SSH only. But most often, one is a symbolic or hard link to another. And so these are just one file in the most cases. And you can do it also as well. So you don't, if you, if you really don't want to. Uh, the, know what you do and want to distinguish and then just make them just one file. But then the thing is that everything what comes to the uh, to the bash RC will be executed and sourced every time when you log in. And here is my one. It's pretty long, so I'm using lots of functions which have been written. The functions we will be writing uh, later on. But here is an example to tell you what's can be done. Uh, let me say that I want as well redefine the U mask over here and say I can put it anywhere. I will use just normal comment. <coughs> and say that I want to use the new U mask, which will be executed every time I am doing this. So it's the, what was the standard you mask for the members? We have defined it somewhere in the files and directories. That's why I remember there was the modification, you mask, you mask, you mask, you mask, you mask. It's 027. 
0027 and since for instance i don't want to give anything to the uh, any permission to the to the group ones i can i'm paranoid i don't really want to share my information with anyone so i can put it no zero zero so what that means that means that every time when i log into the system this u mask will be redefined from the default one to this my new one and it will happen to every single thing that you are doing and for instance i was about to give it to you as a homework and so i go back to the bash rc so i was about to give it to the to you as a homework you can play with the ps1 ps1 is a variable which defines you how your prompt will be looking so this is something that you can take away right now and change it so for instance i do it this way and you can see it has changed a little bit yeah so uh, in order to play with that you can go to the man bash and you can see what these parameters stand for and how to change them back and how to do what so but the only thing that i have changed it right now over here but whenever i open a new session i will still get the new one and for instance if you played with that one and if you found something that you really like you can put it back to the bash rc file and it will be your prompt forever since until the moment you will change it again okay we have two minutes to go but i think i will not say you anything else because this already has been spoken in the session number one this already has been given also somewhere previously and this one i will leave you to you as a homework so otherwise i mean if you want to you can stay for 20 minutes long long more and try it or just do it on your own my only last my only last request is to give please some feedback before you left exercise uh, let's do it this way uh, exercise uh, no this one uh, estimate the lecture material so that's the quick feedback over here uh, but then if you have something advanced please don't hesitate to put it in your feedback course and this is actually a, even some kind of uh, guys it's overall was very good and useful that's enough for us that's a good sign that we are doing the right job but then if you found something which wasn't clear enough or wasn't something enough then just let us know that's definitely good for us we will do the improvements for the next time otherwise thanks for coming for the course and hopefully that was useful for you and hopefully you will find it somehow useful for your future career